I want you to lift your hands to the Most High God and praise His holy name because this is going to be a very special night. This is going to be a night that an end will come to failures in your life. So go ahead and praise His holy name, bless His holy name. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Blessed be thy name. Blessed be thy name. Blessed be thy name. Oh, Lord. Blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, oh Lord, hallelujah. of this we worship you 
Alpha and Omega, we bow before you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Thank you for what you did last month. Thank you for the testimonies of tonight. Thank you for greater things you will do tonight. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. In every area of our lives tonight, Father, do something you've never done before. Where there have been sorrow, let there be joy. Where there have been darkness, let there be light. Where there have been bondage, let there be deliverance. Where there is doubt, let there be faith. Where there have been possibilities, let there be miracles. At the end of it all, take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people and tell him or her, my God will surprise you tonight. And then you may please be seated, except those who are born in the month of September. My Father, my God, I commit your children born in the month of September into your hands. What I'm requesting for them tonight is that in every area of their lives, you will do something new. It will give them new joy, new success, new progress, new anointing, new closer work with God. And please, Father, answer all their prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, those born in the month of September, let your hallelujah be louder. Tonight is going to be special, so we will just go straight into the Word of God so that we will have enough time to pray, after which I have definite instruction from my daddy that every one of us here tonight will be anointed with the oil that destroys the yoke of failure. <laughs> so even though we will be anointing those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb first, those of us who don't want to fail again will also be anointed tonight. Praise the Lord. Now, shall we quickly jump to Psalm 127, verse 3. And while you are doing that, I think we should give the Lord a big, big round of applause for the first preacher. Wow. That young man did a great, great job. He has uh, practically cleared the way for me. 
I think uh, a day is coming when somebody will come up like that, do a great job, and I will just come and say, God bless you, go home. How many of you will say, let that day come quickly, oh Lord. <laughs> that was good. And if you don't remember anything at all, of all the beautiful things he said, Remember, number one, stop looking down and begin to look up. The general overseer may fail you, but God will never fail you. There is a God in the heavens who can never, never fail. Start looking up. Number two, just have faith in God. The Bible says, if you have faith in God, nothing shall be impossible for you. So if you take those two, it should be enough. Stop looking down. Where should you be looking? And have faith in God. Not in man. Not in doctors. Thank God for doctors. They are wonderful people. But they can make mistakes. They can give your wife the wrong blood. Hmm. And when they give you the wrong blood, it takes only God to bring you back to life. It's not their fault. They are human beings. And when God gives you blood, from heaven. SS will become AA. Do I hear somebody shout praise the Lord? So thank you my son for that wonderful presentation and of course I, I cannot stop praising my choir. They always prove that they are the best. And I know they will always be the best. Psalm 127 verse 3. Lo, children and heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. And then you may want to read Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is a rewarder. And one of his reward, one of his rewards is fruit of the womb. And to start with, to me it is really interesting that God is a rewarder. Because everything we have comes from him. First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 16 First Chronicles 29 verse 16 everything we have comes from him now, we're not just talking about silver, gold, uh, money even our wisdom Daniel chapter 2 
from verse 20 to 22. Daniel 2, 20 to 22. He gives wisdom to the wise. Our strength, our energy, we get from him. Isaiah chapter 40, from verse 29 to 30. Isaiah 40, 29 to 30. He gives strength to the weak. Anything you can think of, including the, even the ability to breathe, he gives it to us. And do you know what? All the things that are probably most essential, most important, he gives it to us free. Imagine if you have to pay for the air you breathe. Only rich people will be alive. Because we have to breathe it 24 7. And you know how funny it is. You know all the companies that operate this uh, mobile phone. What do they tell you they are selling? Air time. And selling air. But God gives it to us free. I think somebody should shout hallelujah. Now if he gives us everything free, and then we have an opportunity to serve him. I think that should be a privilege. Because everything we say we are serving him with belongs to him to start with. So why should he then say he's rewarding us for serving him with what he gave us. I think God is just a wonderful father. Just a wonderful, wonderful father. I still remember that Christmas several years ago when Christmas was approaching and all my little children gathered together in their senior brothers, I mean elder brothers' room. And then they sent out the youngest of them. He's a big boy now. At that time, he was like a little puppy dog. <laughs> and he came to me and said, Daddy, what do you want for Christmas? I looked at him. What do you have that you want to give me? What do you want for Christmas? I said anything. Anything you can afford. He ran back into the, to the room and told those people. He came back. He said, tell us exactly what you want. I said, anything, is there, what is anything? I said, okay, buy me a jet. So he ran back into the room, told the others, and he came back and he said, that's not the kind of anything we are asking. <laughs> After they've been going up and down for some time, I said, okay, okay, buy me a pen. Yeah. Then he went back to them and came back and said, Daddy, I want you to borrow me 10 naira. Mm. 
And I gave them 10 naira. And then came Christmas Day. And they came with a pastor. I already know what is in the parcel. It was bought with my money. But I still hug them. I still bless them. Because they even thought about it at all. Do you know if you praise God at all, He rewards you? Do I hear somebody shout hallelujah? We can't fully understand God. Bible makes clear. You, you can't understand Him. He does as He pleases in heaven. He loves cheerful givers. That's probably the only way that can we can explain the fact that He rewards us. Now I'm going to be as brief as possible so that we can have plenty of time to pray. And point out to you that if you serve him with your skill, he will make your home heaven on earth. Exodus chapter 1. Verse 15, 15 to 21. Exodus 1, 15 to 21. The midwives in Egypt serve God with their skill. And the Bible says, because the midwives did that, God made homes for them. There's a difference between a house and a home. There are many people who live in houses and in the house there are quarrels, anger, fighting, all kinds of problems. And there are those who by the special grace of God live in homes where there is joy where there is peace where there is harmony and I'm decreeing for someone here tonight in a way that only God can do it your house will become a home When you serve him with your mouth, he guarantees your legacy. He guarantees your future. Psalm 34 verse 1. Psalm 34 verse 1. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. How did God respond? Second Samuel chapter 7 from verse 1 to 16. Second Samuel 7, 7 from verse 1 to 16. God said to David, there will always be a man on your throne. He said, I will make sure there will always be a man on your throne. And you know what happened in Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52? Mark 10, 46 to 52. When Jesus was passing by, Bartimaeus said, Jesus, thou son of who? 
of David. The one who lives forever is sitting on the throne of David today. Because David said, I will bless the Lord how many times? At all times. His prayer shall continually be where? In my mouth. That's why people who just look for something to criticize and say, why is this man always saying, let somebody shout hallelujah? <laughs> How many of you will bless the Lord at all times? How many of you will use your mouth to praise him? All the days of your life. Those of you who already have children, your children will be great. Those of you who are being regarded as barren now, get ready for your multitude of children. But will you please shout another hallelujah? Some of you will remember the story of one of my daughters with her husband. They went on government scholarship to America. When they got there, they had a set of uh, they, 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 they had a set of children, a set of twins. And then in those days, it was military government, I think. There was a change in government, and the new government canceled scholarships. So they were over there, no money, nothing. The husband was schooling, the wife was at home taking care of children, and they ran out of food. When the husband couldn't take the cry of the babies, they ran to the library to go and be studying. I'm not sure he was actually studying. He was trying to avoid the problem at home. And I decree to somebody here today, that problem in your home that made home difficult to stay in, my God will remove it today. The mother couldn't run away. She had to stay with the children. And the children were crying because they were hungry. And after some time, the mother remembered that I taught them sometimes that when prayer fails, praise will succeed. So she took her tambourine and began to sing praises to God. And suddenly there was a group of people who have been going around from house to house witness. They've been there since morning. And they said, well, it's time now, let's go home. But their leader said, just one more house. And he came to the house of my daughter. When they opened the door to him, and the children saw a huge white man. They kept quiet for a while. And the man said, I've come to talk to you about Jesus. My daughter said, come in, come in. We know about him. And as the man was settling down to begin to preach, my daughter told, her, told him, sorry, sir, we would have entertained you, but there's nothing in the house to give you. And the man said, what do you mean? Nothing. At least there will be a Coke in the fridge. He went, opened the fridge, and the fridge was empty. He looked everywhere, no food. And the man said, wait for me. He went to the shop and brought a load of food. I decree to somebody today, 
even as you begin to use your mouth to praise God from a direction you are not expecting God will send help to you to cut a long story short the white man did not he didn't just provide enough food for the family. He got a job for the husband. That's, that's why the baby they had, after that miracle began, that happened, they named the baby He Careth. They said, God, who cares? That God is here today. It's about to prove to someone that He cares. And if you are that one, your hallelujah will be the loudest. When you serve him with your house, he will reward you with blessings that everybody will hear about. In 2 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 5 to 12, 2 Kings 6, 5 to 12, we hear the story of a man called Obededom. At a time when nobody wanted the Ark of the Covenant of God to come to their home, he opened his door, or he was compelled <laughs> by the king. The Ark of the Covenant remained in the house of Obededo for only three months. God prospered him so mightily the whole nation heard about him. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 7, Luke 5 from verse 1 to 7, Peter made available to God his boat. When God finished preaching, he said thank you. He said thank you with a catch of fish that filled two boats. And the Bible said the boats were sinking. You've heard it said before that there are boat sinking kind of blessings. As a matter of fact, the blessings was so surprising that Peter was afraid Join your faith with mine, even as I decree tonight, that as you allow God to use your properties for his glory, your house for house fellowship, your car for bringing people to the church, whatever it is you have for his glory, before the end of this year, the kind of blessing that will frighten you will come your way in Jesus' name. When you serve him with a sacrificial giving, he will see to it that your blessings will overflow. That's how he rewards sacrificial giving. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. First Kings 17, 8 to 16. A woman had only one meal left for herself and her son to eat and die. She gave it sacrificially to the man of God. And for the rest of her life, she never lacked food. John chapter 6, from verse 5 to 13. John 6, 5 to 13. Jesus needed food to feed the crowd who had come to listen to him. A young boy gave his lunch, the only food he had on. Jesus used the food to feed 5,000 people. And there were 12 baskets left over. 
The twelve baskets were carried to the house of that boy. He gave a lunch. What he got in return required twelve hefty apostles to carry. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know there's someone who is planning to give something sacrificially to God. Don't hesitate because he will reward you. I remember several years ago when we started what we call Christ Redeemer's Congress and we were in desperate need of money. We wanted to feed all those who would come and uh, When I was thinking of the program, all I had was my salary as a lecturer in the university. Couldn't go far. Two of my daughters collected their December salary and brought the salary to me. I said, ah, this is December. What about your Christmas? They said, eh. Uh -uh. We will wear the dress we had last year. The work of God must come first. I thank God for their lives. Today, each of them has a house at Redemption Camp. And when I say house, I'm not talking of a two bedroom flat, I'm talking of mansions. Because he's a, God is a rewarder. And he's about to reward somebody for their sacrifices tonight. When you serve them with your anointing. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell some. Right now. In every facet of life, you are an ordinary person. A daddy asked me to tell you, very, very soon, you will become distinguished. When you serve him, Thank you, Father. I want to say amen to this one. Because the Almighty God asked me to tell someone, your next breakthrough will make headline news. When you serve God with your anointing, now you know anointing, just like anything else, only comes from God. But there are those who are anointed, who are just anointed for form. But when you serve God with your anointing, it will give you special divine promotion. We have the example of Philip in Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7. Acts 6, 1 to 7. There were seven people who were anointed as deacons the same day. But he distinguished himself by doing something with the anointing. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 to 8. Acts 8, 5 to 8. He went to Samaria and within a very short period of time he turned the entire city downside up for Jesus Christ. It wasn't long before 
in Acts chapter 21 verse 8 Acts 21 verse 8 the deacon was referred to as the evangelist the journey from deacon to evangelist is a very long journey he has gone beyond pastor to become an evangelist and uh, like I used to say to you, you've heard me say before, one of my little kids asked me, Daddy, do you know the Bible? I said, I, I, I say, yes, I do. You really know the Bible? I said, I do. Ah, I know the Bible now. He said, in that case, who is Prochorus? I said, I don't know Prochorus. Who is Nicano? Uh -uh. I don't know Nicano. Who is Timon? I said, you mean Simon? He said, no, Timon. I said, I don't know Timon. He said, and you say you know the Bible. He said, because these are the names of the seven original deacons. Ah. I said, I know Stephen, and I know Philip. God have mercy on Prochorus. He just got the anointing and did nothing with it. You know, there are many of us, we've been anointed again and again. And there's not a branch of the Redeemed Christian Church of God in our village. We are rejoicing because we know the Lord. Anointing is working miracles in our lives. But we have not done anything with it. I'm praying for every one of us listening to me now that before the end of the year, you will do something about bringing the gospel to your village in Jesus' name. When you serve Him, with your anointing. He will give you special divine promotion. Do you know that Philip was one of the people that got spiritual transportation? He was seen in one spot, one spot at a time. The next time we saw him, he was in another spot, kilometers away. I've always looked forward to the day I will get that kind of transportation. I've looked forward to the day when on Wednesday I will be in Japan. By the time it is Holy Communion service on Thursday, I will already be here, transported by the Holy Spirit. I'm looking forward to that day. Is anybody looking for that kind of a miracle? It had happened before, it can happen again. In whose life will it happen next? When you serve him with your anointing, he gives you special divine promotion. Now, when you serve him with your child, then he will make your children special. I'm sure you know the story of Hannah. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, from verse 9 to 20, First Samuel, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. I want to say amen to this one. The Lord said, there's someone hearing me now. 
He said, for you, it is settled. And do you know what he said to it? He said, no more sorrow. No more shame. No more losses. Uh, if you are that one, I think you should shout a really big hallelujah. You know the story of uh, Hannah, 1 Samuel chapter 1, from verse 9 to 20. She said to God, I don't have the child yet. They give me the child, and I will serve you with him. The Almighty God agreed. He gave the child. The woman fulfilled her covenant. By the time you read 1 Samuel chapter 2, from verse 18 to 21. Whew, thank you, Lord. The Lord asked me to tell someone. He said, by this time next year, there will be no sign that you have ever been through a storm. By the time we go to 1 Samuel chapter 2 from verse 18 to 21, the Almighty God looked down on the woman and said, All right, I gave you a child. You served me with that child. I'll give you five extra. And that one that you gave to me will become a prophet. 1 Samuel chapter 3, from verse 19 to 21. 1 Samuel 3, 19 to 21. There are prophets and there are prophets. Samuel was a very special prophet. The Bible tells us that when he speaks, before the saliva in his mouth can reach the ground, whatever he says had already come to pass. There are all kinds of prophets. We have them all over the world. Anybody listening carefully will say, this is not a prophecy. This is speculation. But that kind of gift that when you say, Thus saith the Lord, that kind of ability that when you say, There is someone here, and even before you finish, it has happened. Receive it tonight in Jesus' name. I wish we had enough time during the last convention. I would have called forward those people that God said were healed. You would have been amazed at the number of them. But God is not asleep, and he hasn't changed yet. And I'm believing him tonight that any kind of sickness that has to do with the womb or with the belly shall be healed tonight. Now, when you now decide to serve him with 
all your life. Not just your money, your property, your anointing, your, but your entire life. He will reward you with long life and good health. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. The Bible tells us that Moses was 120 years old when he died. Even at that age, he didn't need glasses because his eyes were not dim. Even at that age, the Bible says he was virile. His natural force was not abated. That means he was still strong enough if he wanted to take a brand new wife. He was healthy. As many of you as are willing to serve God wholeheartedly, any appointment you have with death is cancelled. You will live long and you will be healthy. In Luke chapter 1, from verse 1 to 25, Luke 1 from verse 1 to 25, the Bible tells us about Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. They served God, husband and wife, in purity. And the Almighty God rewarded them even in their old age. Not only with a son, but a son that in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, Matthew 11, verse 11, a son that is called the greatest of all born of women in the Old Testament. You choose to serve God with your life. You will live long. You will be healthy. And even if the world has lost hope that you can ever have a child, God will give you a very special one. Let me conclude. Like I told you, we want to pray. The prayer of tonight is not going to be for 10 minutes. Because actually, as far as God is concerned, the minimum time of prayer He expects from us is one hour. That's why He said to the, to the disciples, when he said, watch with me. And he came back and found them sleeping. He said, uh -uh, can't you watch with me for one hour? And considering what we want to ask God for tonight, even if we pray for one hour, it is not too much. Because I'm believing God and I believe you will join your faith with mine. That before the end of this year, barrenness will be completely terminated in our church. And like I've explained before in the past, 
When we talk about barrenness, some of us think of a woman expecting a child. Number one, do you know it? Many a times when they say a woman is barren, the fault is not that of the woman. The fault will be that of the man. Number two, barrenness is not just not having a baby. It means you are working hard, but there's nothing to show for it. You're working like an elephant, and you're eating like an ant. That's coming to an end tonight. <laughs> barrenness could even apply to a pastor. He prays, he studies the Bible, he preaches well, but after one year, there's nothing to show for it. That's called barrenness. When I was a lecturer in the university, Promotion is based on how many papers you can produce. So you, you have your degree, all right, but you are not producing papers. And because you are not producing papers, no promotion. When they want to describe you, they will say, is mentally barren. And that the brain is not uh, producing results. It doesn't mean that the brain is dead. It's that we are not seeing results. Whatever in your life that could cause people to say, eh, you say you are serving God. We even understand that your God is the God of uh, one small pastor or so we are called Adeboye. We are hearing the testimony of others. What about your own? Whatever is causing people to say, where is your God? It's a form of barrenness and it will be terminated tonight. <laughs> but you must be ready to pray. That's why I've made the sermon short. So you can have enough time to pray. Do you know it doesn't take God time? Many of us who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. We can be pregnant before the end of this month. Or shall I say it in faith and say you shall be pregnant before the end of the month. And those of you who have been on the same spot for years, who have not been promoted in your place of work, they all call you hard working. They say you are honest. They say, oh, we know you are a Christian, you are reliable. But when the time for promotion comes, they dodge you. Ah, get ready for double promotion. Because we are going to cry to God tonight. But anything called barrenness in his church must be permanently terminated. How many of you will be willing to pray? And God himself will answer us in Jesus' name. But of course you know 
that the only prayer of a sinner that God answers is have mercy on me, Lord, save my soul. Any other prayer when you are still living in sin will be a waste of time. Because the Bible says the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot see. Neither is there heavy that he cannot hear. But your sin can separate between you and your God that you will not hear. So we need to get anything that could obstruct our prayer out of the way. So if you are here and you know you are not sure of your salvation and you want God to answer your prayers tonight, I appeal to you, come forward very quickly. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. Come and cry to him for salvation. We will join our prayers with yours. He will save your soul. And with your sins out of the way, he will answer you by fire. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to count from one to ten. You must be standing before the altar before I say ten. And we together cry to God for your salvation. So if you want to come, begin to come now. As I begin to count. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Now those of you on the way keep coming and praying as you are coming. Those of us in the front, let's cry unto the Almighty God. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Wipe away all my sins. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Have mercy on me today. Save my soul. Let's go ahead. Talk to the Almighty God. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. That the one who saved their own souls will save their own souls also. That he will forgive them. He will wipe away all their sins with his blood. That he will become their Lord and their Savior. Please pray for them. And those of you on the way, hurry up. Come quickly. Those of you in front, continue to pray. Cry to Jesus Christ. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to save your soul. 
Ask him to forgive all your sins. Ask him to become your Lord and your Savior. Promise him that for the rest of your life you will serve him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name for your word. And I want to thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They have come to you now, Father. Receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wipe away all their sins. Amen. Save their souls and write their names in the book of life. Amen. Let them become children of God today. Amen. And from now on, whenever they call on you, please answer them by fire. Amen. And don't let them ever backslide. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Those of you who have given your life to Jesus, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Let's write down our prayer requests. Number one, we want to thank the Almighty God because He is a rewarder. We don't deserve any rewards, but he is still a rewarder. Let's thank him for that. And number two, we will cry unto him and say, Father, any call, anything called barrenness. in your church destroy tonight barrenness in my home barrenness in your church in my life destroy completely tonight Number three, say, Father, end fruitless efforts in my life. Put a permanent end to fruitless efforts in my life. whether physically, mentally, spiritually, maritally, put an end to fruitless efforts in my life. Number four. I say, Father, don't let me ever fail again in anything. Don't let me ever fail again. Number five. Father, Remember me today. Whenever you remember somebody, their lives won't remain the same. Remember me today.
Number six. Anything called reproach in my life. Anything that will cause people to say, where is my God? Terminate it tonight. Please, Daddy. Terminate it tonight. Number seven, Father, let my miracle, my breakthrough be now, now, now. Number eight, Father, please give me the grace to serve you much better than before. Number nine. Don't let me miss my rewards. Don't let me miss my rewards. Number 10, Father, answer my neighbors too. Please answer my neighbors too. Number 11, Father, answer the general overseer too. And then number 12, whatever is that you want to add, the altar is open, and tonight we want to cry to him, and we want to really, really spend time talking to him.
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. It is written, if two of us shall agree as touching anything we ask on earth, it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. Amen. Tonight, I'm in total agreement with all of you. In your life, in your home, in your churches, barrenness will be terminated. In all our lives, fruitless efforts will be over. In the name that's above every other name, we will never fail again. The one who remembered Rachel and her sorrow turned to joy. We remember each and every one of us. Amen. Any reproach that may be left in our lives will be gone before tomorrow morning. I agree with all of you. Our miracles, our breakthroughs, whatever it is that we have been waiting for that will make our joy full, we receive it now. The grace to serve God better. Since we know he's a rewarder, the grace to serve him with everything, we receive it now. In the name of the great rewarder himself, I agree with you we will not miss our rewards. God will remember us. He will answer us. He will open the heavens over us. In the way that only he can do it. This particular month, we will all have cause to shout for joy. As for all those who have been asking, where is our God? This very month, God will show them. He will silence our mockers. He will give us ground-shaking miracles. Miracles that cannot be denied. 
miracles that the world will hear about. God will give to all of us. He shall be well with you. He will hear your cry. He will answer us by fire. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. We can go back to our seats. And we will go on quickly to the anointing service. tonight your response must be in faith you will just go back to your seat rejoicing thanking God that the yoke of fruitless efforts have been destroyed in your life Don't pray. Just praise God. 
and it will be unto you according to your faith. Remember he said, as I've heard in my ears, so will I do unto you. So as soon as you are anointed, you just go back to your seat, dancing, rejoicing, thanking God that the yokes of fruitless efforts at last have been broken in your life. And so shall it be. Oh 
is a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. He has never failed. He will never fail. He will do what he says he will do. He will do what he promised to do. I can see. Ajudei-te, Senhor. Agora rega 
anointed those who are sure that at long last the yoke of fruitless efforts have been destroyed shout hallelujah Before I pronounce the final blessings for tonight, let's take our thanksgiving offering and lift it up to the Almighty God again in faith and announce it loud and clear so that even the devil can hear. And just say, Father, I thank you. Because the yoke of poverty has been broken in my life. Go ahead, talk, tell the Almighty God. And let the devil hear you. That the yoke of poverty has been broken in my life at long last. Oh, Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
because the yoke of poverty had been broken in my life at last. Oh, thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So we dance to the nearest basket, drop our offering, and then we'll say the closing prayer, and we'll be on our way home. Over to you, band. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
in the name of the one who made heaven and earth you will never suffer again you will never borrow again you will never beg again you will never lack again God will supply all your needs you will have more than sufficient He shall be well with you. Yeah. My God will receive your offering. Yeah. He will bless it. Yeah. He will use it for his glory. Yeah. And he will reward you richly. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. And on your way home, there will be miracles. Even before Sunday, you will have cause to shout for joy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, before you begin to go home, I want you to shake hands with at least three people and tell them, you will hear my testimony soon.